Okay, uh, and then in terms of the, we have the parliamentary legal advisor. Chairperson, yeah. I'm also here. Oh, Zandamela. Mm. Okay. Uh, what do I even pick your name up? I'm going to put this list uh, on. <laughs> uh, okay, no, I see that. I, I think because your name is after your, the name of your phone. Apologies for that, Uncle Zandamela. Um, as I was saying, we have the parliamentary legal advisor. Excellent. We have um, a representative from the Office of the State Law Advisor. I think she's present. Yes, and uh, okay, and uh, Mr. Babobolo from the IEC is also present. Um, let me just take this opportunity to, to welcome uh, all honorable members uh, to this meeting. Um, and obviously a special welcome to Honorable Mbwezi. I hope I'm pronouncing your, your, your surname right, Mbwezi, but um, maybe it'll be nice to see you, uh, if you don't mind to, to put on your camera and to greet us. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson, and thanks for welcoming me. Thank you, honorable members. That is honorable Ngwezi. Uh, honorable Ngwezi, I think you'll get to know members of the committee um, as today's proceedings continue. Uh, it's unfortunate that we can't meet you uh, physically, but I'm sure the time for that will happen in due course. Uh, but feel very welcome. This is the Select Committee on Security and Justice. I'm, I'm the chairperson. My name is Sheila Sheikh. Uh, the members, uh, like yourself, also come from various provinces, and, and I'm sure you'll also get to know, know that information in due time. But feel very welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, our members, uh, let me also welcome the uh, the CEO of the IEC uh, and other officials who might be present. Um, when I say honorable Nita, you're welcome as well. Um, okay. And, uh, and, and obviously the parliamentary legal advisor and, and the representative from the Office of the State Legal Advisor. Well, remember, the, in, in terms of our last meeting, uh, we deliberated on the presentations made by the IEC uh, in response to comments by stakeholders. We particularly dealt with amendments to Clause 8 and Clause 20. Um, amendments to Clause 8 essentially dealt with competing rights in terms of the protection of personal information in, in terms of safeguarding the personal information of voters um, while ensuring that there's uh, added access to information as well. So we tasked the parliamentary legal advisor to, together with the a state law advisor to finalize the proposed amendments to the electoral laws uh, amendment bill. Uh, members would have been sent the proposed amendments as well as a draft committee report. However, it did come to my attention late yesterday as well that uh, from our parliamentary legal advisor that they had further discussions and they were trying to, their further final amendments that were sent unfortunately to members this morning. Uh, but be that as it may, honorable members, I'm going to call upon uh, our parliamentary legal advisor, Ms. Sue Ann Isaac, uh, to take members through the proposed amendments, and, and I think she'll talk to, to, to the final document uh, as well. Uh, Ms. Isaac? Thank you, Chairperson. Um, good morning to the Chairperson, members and guests. Um, I'm going to ask Gershwin to just project the document so we can all have a look at the same um, document. Uh, Gershwin, is it the one that I sent you this morning? Hi, Sue Ann. Yes, it is. Um, could you just check the one that I sent you has um, 
red, red um, track changes in them. Good morning, Chairperson. Question while you're sorting that out, uh, I see Honorable Dengo is with us as well as Honorable Bartlett. Question if you could rename the uh, Galaxy Tab S5E, yeah. that's Honorable Bartlett, when you do get a chance. Uh, but welcome to the other members. Yeah, Chairperson, I may have to leave at 11 30 again. We have transport. No, no problem, uh, Honorable Dengo, but welcome. Uh, I'm, I've, I've spoken to programming. Uh, this programming of WIPS meetings together with uh, security meetings and transport meetings at the same time is in the, indeed a challenge. We feel for you, Honorable Dango. Thank you. But I hope it gets resolved. Um, so, person, the, the document is now the correct one. Can I proceed? Uh, please proceed. Uh, uh, yes, thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, as you indicated, uh, we had sent a list of the proposals to members, but between uh, the last two days, uh, between the IUC, the State Board Advisor, and myself, there were further discussions, and the IUC has just raised uh, two concerns uh, about the proposal am proposed amendments, and I will just indicate uh, what their concerns are and how we try to accommodate that. So Chairperson, on the first document, we had in initially in uh, suggested that we include a definition for independent candidates. Uh, in clause eight, there's intention to insert the phrase independent candidates in light of the constitutional court judgment. However, on subsequent uh, consideration and uh, after discussions with the IEC, it was um, suggested that we don't at this stage include a definition for independent candidates. Uh, this definition we have relates to the local government level and the, the deliberations regarding national and provincial level are still ongoing. So the suggestion is that we remove this definition and leave independent candidate undefined until such time as a parliament finishes its processes. Um, Chairperson, the, uh, I can go on to the next proposal, which is, that is dealing with clause eight, which is to amend section 16 of the electoral act. And this is the clause that we discussed in the main last week, which deals with access to information. So initially the, uh, the clause suggested that the chief electoral officer must be satisfied that there are three requirements we met. Um, prior to the information is given, being given, and this is to bring it in line with the poppy legislation. Uh, we've just refined the amendment uh, in terms of wording. It's still the same intention. It's just that we try to redraft it in a, a, a simpler way. And if we can just look at the proposed version uh, below that version. So the proposed version uh, we'll, we'll now just read, um, the chief electoral officer must provide a certified copy or extract from the segment of the voter's role as it exists at the time to any person who has paid the prescribed fee. If the chief electoral officer is satisfied that the person requires the information, one, to monitor the accuracy of the information in the voter's role, two, for statistical or research purposes, or three, any other purpose that is prescribed and providing that information will not involve the unlawful processing of personal information in terms of the Protection of Personal Information Act. Um, Chairperson, you can see that I've highlighted something in green. Um, so one of the other issues that the IEC raised was that they were just concerned with the phrasing of Roman numeral one. Um, they were just concerned that the to state that the person requires the information to monitor the accuracy of the information in the voter's role may uh, lead to different interpretations. Um, they are of the view that this may just give the person 
the idea that they can still contest the accuracy of the voters' roll, even when uh, the dates for objections are closed. So uh, we, we did take into consideration their concern, and as they are going to be the people implementing the legislation, we thought of a way to accommodate them. And the, uh, the, green, the, the portion that is highlighted in green is what we propose. So instead of saying to monitor the accuracy of the information in the voters' roll, we will say to monitor the voters' roll for election purposes. So that is just to remove any doubt that this is not a, a further method that anyone can use to object. Objections are still done in terms of section 15 of the Electoral Act. So we're hoping that will assist in removing any confusion as to the meaning of that um, sub clause. Um, chairperson, if we can move to uh, the next clause. So this is the insertion of the uh, offense where a person uses the information clause 2A. If the person uses the uh, information for any purpose other than listed. So again, uh, we just reworded it instead of using the term a certified copy of or extract from the segment of the voters role. We are now just referring to that as a collective information. So we now state any person who uses the information obtained under subsection two for a purpose other than specified in that section is guilty of an offense and is liable on conviction to a fine or imprisonment for a period not exceeding one year or both a fine and such imprisonment. So those were just basically drafting um, corrections or changes. The next amendment is to subclause three. You can just go to the proposed version. So chairperson, here is, uh, this is the clause that the intention is to insert the word independent candidates. Uh, we, we, when we looked at the clause, um, we realized that the current wording of the act refers to uh, registered political parties. However, the act defines only registered parties. So for sake of consistency, we, we, we think it's best to use what is defined. A registered party is a political party that is registered with the IEC. Um, but it's not, we shouldn't be using these phrases uh, interchangeably. We would stick to the defined version. So the new section will in still include independent candidates, but we now just use the correct uh, defined phrase. So the subclause three will now read, notwithstanding subsection two, the chief electoral officer must, on payment of a prescribed fee, provide copies of the voters' role to, or a segment thereof, which includes the addresses of voters, where such addresses are available to a registered party and an independent co candidate contesting the elections. If we go to sub clause four, please. Again, Chairperson, this is um, basic um, drafting, just redrafting it to make it simpler. Um, again, instead of referring to the voters' role with addresses, we refer to the use the phrase the information. So subclause four deals with access of the voters role to political parties and now independent candidates. We again, instead of here, they use the term political parties and then we will carry over from subclause to be the word registered party. So subclause four will read, the information obtained in subclause three may only be used by a registered party and an independent candidate for election purposes and any further such information uh, and, any, and any person using such information for other purposes is guilty of an offense and is liable on conviction to a fine or imprisonment for a period not exceeding one year or both a fine and such imprisonment. We can move on to sub clause five. The chairperson, this subclause dealt with the reduction of the identity numbers. And this was the clause that was contentious because uh, we needed to align it with copy while balancing the right uh, to access to information. 
So originally the clause said that the uh, ID number must be rejected and only the six uh, digits should be given that indicates the voter's birthday. But in the previous meeting, we, um, the department had suggested to the minister that we also include details of the citizenship. Um, so that will make it easier to verify if the person is eligible to vote as well. So in light of that uh, suggestion, this is the clause that we are now proposing. Uh, also, instead of stating in the negative that you may not give the ID number, we now indicate what must be given. Um, and it's now stated in the positive. So if we can just um, go up a little bit to clause five, the proposed version, it will now read for the purposes of subsection two and three, the electoral officer may only provide the digits of the identity number of voters, which indicates the voter's date of birth and citizenship, except where the person who requires the information satisfies the chief electoral officer that a exceptional circumstances require that it additional digits of the voter's identity number be disclosed and b providing that information would not involve the unlawful processing of personal information in terms of the protection of personal information act 2013 of 2013 um, just another point on um, Subclause A, 5A, uh, instead of saying the full identity number, we had said additional digits. So the IEC CEO will be able to release only that um, additional digits that are necessary to differentiate maybe to, between two voters with the same name. And where, where it is necessary, the full identity number will be released. But where it's not, then maybe one or two digits can differentiate, and that will be done there. And our reasoning for that is that in Poppy, the, the, one of the major principles is that we must release the, is the principle of minimality, uh, where personal information must be protected and only what is necessary must be further processed. And Chuck if we can go to the next one, that is dealing with um, subclause, sorry, with clause 20 and that is to amend section 47 of the Local Government Electoral Act. We did not make any further changes to what was proposed to the, by the IEC in the last meeting. This was to accommodate the concern, the, the IEC's proposal was to accommodate the concern by, um, I think it was the city of Cape Town where the different voting methods must, must, must not be different from that that is already contained in the act. So the proposal by the IEC does um, adequately uh, cover the concern of the city of Cape Town. So clause seven uh, will still be an amendment proposed by this committee and will read as follows. The commission may prescribe a different voting procedure, which must with the provisions of this, which must accord with the provisions of this section for those voters whose names appear on the voters roll without addresses, provided that if such voter place Voters' place of ordinary residence is lo located outside the relevant A, ward in which the segment of the voter's role and voter's name appears. The voter concerned may not vote in the ward elections contemplated in sec section 221B of the Local Government Municipal Structures Act 1998, uh, Act number 117 of 1998. B local or metropolitan music municipality on whose segment of the voters row that voters name appears the voter concern may not vote in the elections contemplated in section 221a or the ward election contemplated in section 221b of the local government municipal structures act 1998 act number 117 of 1998 and c district municipality on whose segment of the voters roll, the voters name appears. The voter concern may not vote in the election for members of the district contemplated in section 23 1A of the Local Government Municipal Structures Act, 1998, Act number 117 of 1998. Uh, Chairperson, those are the um, amendments that were proposed or discussed in last week's committee meeting. And we've tried to capture the uh, instructions of the committee and the discussions. Thank you, Chair. 
thank you very much, uh, Sven. Um, can I get an indication from the state law advisor if uh, she wishes to add anything? Uh, Ms. Naido. Good morning, Chair. Yes. yes, Lisa Naido. Good morning, Chair and colleagues. Just to add a little bit more information regarding why we removed the definition of independent candidates. The history behind it is obviously the Constitutional Court case that ruled, sorry, that ruled that um, to not include individuals who are not affiliated with a political party to contest elections made the Electoral Laws Act unconstitutional. So from there, these amendments to the other sections that together with registered political parties, we added an independent candidates. But when the issue of a definition for independent candidates came up, and the IEC obviously being line function and best suited to define this, it posed a problem because there needs to be further policy formulation and consultation around a precise definition. But for now, the way it's done, we uh, decided that we will exclude at this juncture a definition for independent candidates. And later on, it can come through after proper consultation and policy formulation. And the concern that uh, the um, IEC raised with section 16, initially section 16 two was omitted. We needed to align section 16 overall with the Protection of Personal Information Act and access to information. The concern of the IEC, as indicated by Suan, is that it provides now another category for objections. The way it was previously, section 15 and 16 are read, even though all sections should be read together, but section 15 is very specific. It deals with objections. Section 16 deals with access to information. And from the side of the state law advisor, when we interpret this, there is really no clash. There is no overlap of intentions where 16 is bringing in a new category, a category for objections. So the way it is done now is fine. And uh, as indicated by Suan, we've omitted reference to monitor the accuracy and rather left it to monitor the voters' role. And the IC seems to have accepted that. But from our side, from the Office of the Chief State Law Advisor, we see no real new category because that would be inserted under 15 objections and how that process should play out. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Naidu. On um, my members, that is the presentation. I see Honorable Zadova is also joining us. Welcome. Um, are there any uh, questions that members would like to raise? Uh, I, I see two hands, great. Uh, Anwar Mtetwa, and then Anwar Mikulakis will follow. Anwar Mtetwa. Yes, Chair. Um, the, uh, I did not understand that issue. What was the intention of the, um, the word accuracy? What was behind that accuracy that you meant before? Um, before it now I can see it's being removed. And how do you think it, it, it would have caused a problem in the act? That's the first one, Chair. And the last one, isn't it election based on political? Is it not political? Why do you have to remove political parties? Because political parties, even though candidates are independent, but they are contesting a space of politics. I don't understand the total removing of that political party. Um, I, I'm not sure on the section because I'm, it's in the same gadget that I, 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 I am using. Thanks, Chair. Uh, thank you, Honorable Mteka. Honorable Mikulakis. Thank you, Chair. Um, there's still one part of the bill that does not sit very well with me, and I'm going to focus just on that for you. Um, and I want to, to, to give you my argument. I think we should, as a committee, actually have time to discuss this 
uh, properly. I think we still have some time for the bill. But Chair, um, I don't think, and I'm specifically referring to the disclosure or non-disclosure of the full ID number. Um, I don't think we as a committee have stopped to ask ourselves what it is that we want to achieve through this clause. Um, if it is to safeguard personal information, I have serious doubts whether this clause actually achieves uh, that purpose uh, the best that we can possibly do. There is, for example, no indication what happens to a person's information uh, that's provided to a station captain of the IEC on local level uh, after the elections? How do they dispose of that full printed out voters role after the elections? The information can get stolen over there. It's also much more likely that hackers will hack the Department of Home Affairs or the IEC, who both have the full voters role. So in both instances, uh, this clause does not address that. So the problem does not go away. We heard last week from the minister himself that every single digit of the ID number is important to verify the eligibility of a voter and his identity. So the principle of minimality becomes impossible to apply fairly because every single digit is important. The minister himself answered that. So this clause, in my opinion, will cast serious doubts on free and fair elections. Chair, I think our focus is wrong. We are focusing on concealing information that is needed for free and fair elections. What we should rather be focusing on is regulating the way in which all of these entities, political parties, independent candidates, the IEC, Home Affairs, all of them go about responsibly in such a way with the information that it will not pose a risk to the public. I think rather than this clause, we should ask ourselves how we can better uh, ensure that the entities who get the information acts with that information in a responsible way. We need to ask ourselves if this is the best way to achieve what it is that we seek to achieve. And I personally think that we can do better, Chair. In light of that, Chairperson, I would like to ask that we be afforded as the committee a chance actually debate some of these issues because we still have time to process the bill. And I also think that um, I th the, the proposal was, I believe, that we consider the bill today for adoption. But in light of the fact that we also just received the most recent version this morning, um, that we perhaps hold off for a little bit on that instead of doing it today, so that we can at least have some proper time to consider and apply our minds to the latest version. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Mikalakis. Honorable Sulegu. Uh, good morning, Chair. Good morning to Honorable Members. Uh, Chair, the majority of points has been covered by my colleague, uh, Honorable Mikalakis. But what I would like to know, Chair, I would like uh, uh, the IEC just to elaborate on what they deem as exceptional circumstances where the full ID would be disclosed. Thank you very much, Chair. Okay, thank you. Uh, Honorable Mwedi. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson, and greetings to all honorable members and the CEO of the IEC. Uh, Chair, I'm, I'm attending here for the first time, uh, but um, I, I would like to be assisted, Chair. Somewhere in the presentation, I've forgotten what clause is that but where it mentions the, the issue of the voters' role being given to political parties or rather and independent candidates, uh, just only. And, you know, I've got a, a view that, uh, you know, the, the, the public has got too much um, interest in the running of the elections in this country. For instance, your, your civic organizations. Uh, I, I know that, uh, for instance, you, they might not have registered for elections, for example, SANCO and any other, you see, Red Payers Association, they may want to call to command. And, you know, my, my, my feeling is that 
uh, maybe somewhere we need to put a clause because anyway, you know, any institution in the country cannot refuse with information. I don't think that is constitutional, but maybe if we leave, you know, other interest groups, you know, um, I, I don't know, Chair, I hope you understand what I'm, 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 I'm trying to say. And uh, I, I want to raise a, a matter also to say that I'm not sure whether in, the, in this bill, you know, the, the issue of voters cro illegally crossing the borders a day before or during the day to come and vote and go back to the country where they stay. For instance, in the areas of uh, uh, KwaZulu-Natal next to the borders, your Pongola, Ingwavuma, Mshabuya Lingana, Yompumalanga area, those areas, because I, I think that maybe it's time that we address such things, you know, uh, because we may have everything, you know, people have got double citizenship and uh, I don't think Home Affairs have finished actually addressing that. I know there are attempts by the SADC region to address that, but I don't think they finished doing that. Uh, thank you very much. Chair. Otherwise, I'm very happy for some of the amendments that are here. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Amongu. Um, this Honorable Zanda Mella. Honorable Zanda Mella. No, thanks, uh, Chair. My audible. Yes. Yeah. No, Chair. I'm. I'm. I'm it. That was raised in the presentation. Exceptional. Uh, uh, circumstances. What, what, what can they please maybe explain the exceptional uh, circumstances where they will send uh, the full details of uh, of the ITs? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Honorable Dodo. Your hand was up. Are you? And then I think you got off the platform and you joined again. Um, Honorable Dodo. Yes. Can you hear me, Chair? Yes. Can you hear me, Chair? Yes. yes. My, my question, I'm mostly covered by most of the questions. I'm going to do. Hello. Yes. Can, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. My, my, my question is in respect of the linkage between this amendment with the amendment that we made in respect of the Municipal Structures Act last year. There was a lot of engagement with the IDC in that respect. Uh, are, they, are they compatible? Are they okay in that respect? I'm largely covered by most of the questions in there. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Bartlett? Yeah, Chair, well, not repeat what the other members have said, just to say that we will accept this bill with the recommendation, but because we discussed already, but then Honorable China already covered it. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, Honorable Members, uh, I think in terms of our deliberations last week, we did cover uh, some aspects of, of what was read. Um, however, I, I think that uh, just to maybe enlighten the committee further on certain matters that are being raised today. Um, I'm going to ask the IEC uh, to perhaps touch on some of these matters, um, especially also elaborate on the issue of exceptional circumstances. Uh, Honorable Mikalaki's issues, uh, I think we dealt with that quite a lot in, in the last meeting and it uh, related largely to, to the uh, Protection of Personal Information Act and hence the redaction of, of, of such information. But let me allow, um, allow the Mr. Mamabolo from the IEC, perhaps to respond to some of the questions, even asked by Honorable uh, Dodovu and Honorable Ngwezi. Mr. Mamabolo. 
Um, thank you uh, very much uh, for the opportunity, Chairperson, and greetings to um, members of the committee, our colleagues uh, in the Parliamentary Legal Service and the State Law Advisor. I'm joined here by Mr. Shibori, so that's the uh, delegation from our side. Chair, at the outset, uh, we want to be categorical that the redrafting that has been done by the Parliamentary Legal Service in conjunction with the state law um, advisors, we support. We, th we think uh, the, the redrafting will give the bill a greater clarity than the version that we had put uh, previously. Now, coming to the questions on the table, um, the question of political parties and uh, registered parties is only to ensure uh, consistency between the definitions uh, as well as the body of the act. So the, what, what the parliamentary legal service have done is to go to use wedding, which is defined in the act and not introduce concepts that are not uh, defined in the, uh, in the act. So the removal of political party substituted by a registered party is to achieve that. Use concepts that are defined that helps with the reading of the bill. So it's a usability, it, it improves the usability, readability of the bill. That's really what is being uh, done here. So political parties remain a cornerstone of, um, a cornerstone of the participatory process in elections. Uh, political parties are not being removed. We are just al uh, aligning um, for greater, for better readability of the, uh, of the act. Now, the issue related to, um, to accuracy is linked to the purpose for section 16. So, section 16, it's intended to give to various categories of people and institutions, copies of the voters' role, which is why its heading says publication of the voters' role. So that is a voters' role that has already been certified and people are entitled to it in terms of the um, provisions that, that then follow. Section 16 is therefore not intended to introduce a new class <coughs> of objections. <coughs> Excuse me. Section 16 is therefore not intended to introduce a new class of objections. Its purpose is to provide copies of voters' roles to certain categories of electoral stakeholders. Um, uh, there's a, a question that came regarding um, that everybody is interested in election and therefore entitled a copy of the of the voters' role. Indeed, that's what this uh, section 16.2 is doing, but link that to a purpose, uh, and that purpose is clarified under section two, uh, capital sorry uh, two, a um, Roman figure one to Roman figure. It, it acknowledges that everybody is entitled to that information for as long as they fulfill the purposes that are defined in the bill. So it's not merely for political parties. Section 16.2 deals with everybody else. Section 16.3, political parties, um, and so on. So that's what this thing is about. Now, Chair, in saying that 16, uh, uh, section 16 in its totality is not intended to deal with objections, it does not mean there is no framework for objections. There is a framework for objections, which is in section 15. 
So anybody who believes that there are inaccuracies or irregularities or persons should not be on certain segments of the voter's role, they are not without a mechanism to vindicate that. That mechanism is available and is extant in section 15 of the act. Now, the, <clears throat> the issue of section uh, 16.5, the reduction of um, certain components or digits of the ID number, here is the, uh, uh, the reasoning. You need a voter's role to check whether people who are on the role are qualified to vote. And there are two broad constitutional qualifications. The first qualification is the age qualification. You've got to be 18 years or older to be able to cast a vote. So you need that information to, to check that. The second constitutional qualification is that you've got to be a citizen of the Republic. So you need information that enables you to verify that fact. And section 16.5 as currently proposed addresses precisely that. You do not need further information to make those determinations. You don't need whether a person is female, um, what is their sequential number on the day on which they were born, when they were, that information is irrelevant for electoral purposes. Because the constitution says you've got to be 18 years, so we need to enable you to make that verification. You've got to be a citizen, citizen, we avail information to help you with that verification. But parliament also has got to have laws that are, are not contradictory. In Popia, this parliament has already said, there are principles against which an assessment must be made um, by the responsible party, whether the, uh, the disclosure of personal information accords with certain principles. One of that principles is minimality and that is defined in section 10 of, of, of Popia. That give information to the extent that it is necessary for the purpose for which is intended. Now, the purpose here is clear. It's a constitutional um, verification, or rather a verification of constitutional factors, age and citizenship. And we will, in, on the current uh, formulation of section uh, 16.5, we will provide that which is necessary and minimal to enable you to make a determination whether people are, are qualified to, to be on the, um, on the voters' roll. Chair, in terms of the disposal procedures, material that is used at the voting station, including used ballot papers, unused ballot papers, the voters role used at the voting station has got to be packed and stored for six months in law. And after six months of storage, the commission has to take a purposeful decision to dispose that material. And 
we normally have a very well-defined process of disposal of those ballots, voters' rolls, um, and all other material that is used at the voting station. We don't throw it in a bin. There's a very meticulous procedure that we undertake to dispose um, of, 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 um, of, the, of, of the used uh, material at the voting station, include, including used um, uh, voters' rolls. Now, if perhaps, let's assume there are 23,000 23, voting stations in the country. If, for, 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 for instance, there's an aberration uh, at the instance of one presiding officer, um, they don't handle the, the, um, the material properly and they don't uh, um, return it back to the warehouse as they should. That cannot be risen um, to legislate in a manner that then um, is an affront to the uh, disclosure of personal information of voters. We deal with that aberration on its own merits and ensure that the officer concerned uh, faces due processes um, in, 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 in the IC. But that is not a basis to make a law of general application. Now, the hackers, indeed, uh, chair and members of the committee, H hackers are active all the time. They, um, they are working to penetrate uh, the systems uh, of corporates, uh, public institutions, and so on. It is our responsibility as the responsible party in terms of Popia to ensure that we take reasonable measures to protect our IT environment. For that reason, we continuously update our security tools on our network. And ahead of elections, we fortify those. Um, we do relevant uh, security audits um, on, of the network and so on and so on and so on. So there are a series of measures that we implement to protect the, um, the security of the network and therefore the information that we are processing with details of, 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 of voters. Now, we will continue to do that to protect that information in that way. So because it's a, it's a positive duty we have uh, to, to do that. But the potential for hacking, again, cannot be risen to legislate in a manner that creates a dispensation for the wanton disclosure of, of, of uh, personal information of voters. Now, what are exceptional circumstances in terms of uh, Section 16.5? The exceptional circumstances will be varied and will depend on the peculiarities of each case. But just to give you two, one I've already mentioned in the committee last week, that where there are people with the same names, common names, um, born on the same day, in such an instance, it might be an exceptional situation requiring the, the disclosure of additional digits. But in a particular VD or ward or um, a combination of wards, there may be allegations of fraud and so on. So in order to investigate uh, the alleged fraud, uh, if there's a prima facie case of fraud and so on, it might be in that instance, 
um, a situation that calls for the uh, disclosure of additional digits to enable a proper investigation um, uh, to happen. But again, it's a, it's a, it's a peculiarity, it's a circumstance um, that is dependent on each set of merits and, and so on. Um, so those could be um, other exceptional circumstances, but there may be other many because they are unforeseeable. One cannot sit here and foresee all um, uh, possibilities. There may be instances uh, where there's prima facie evidence of wrongdoing, but in order to unearth the wrongdoing and investigate it proper, there may be a need uh, in that instance to uh, disclose additional digits of the ID um, to assist uh, people to make proper objections in terms of section, section 15. Um, now, the, yes, indeed, uh, um, Member Totovu, we, uh, the, the amendments in the, in the Structures Act um, and these amendments that are before the, uh, the committee, there are no tensions. Um, they are in fact uh, part of the pre preparation program uh, for the elections, which are due later this year. So they are um, aligned and there is no discord uh, between the two pieces of legislation. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mamabolo. Uh, if I can get an indication from the, the state law advisor, uh, if there's anything she would like to add. Thank you, Chair. Just to expand on the uh, wording exceptional circumstances, you would usually find it in um, our justice legislation with uh, offenses. But in this regard, as the commissioner explained, the intention is for the chief electoral officer who is best placed as line function in dealing with the elections to determine what is exceptional circumstances. So when he does this, he's going to exercise a value judgment after considering the applicant's reasoning. So it will be done on a case by case basis, similar to what's been done in the courts. And that is why we didn't give an exhaustive list of what will amount to exceptional circumstances in the instance. And we left it open to the electoral, to the chief electoral officer to determine this. Thank you, Chair, nothing further. Thank you. I think it will also deal with unforeseen circumstances as well. Um, uh, Sue Ann, uh, Ms. Isaacs, so, person, I think all the uh, responses covered the questions. Um, just with regarding to poppy, I mean, it's just to emphasize that it is legislation that was passed by Parliament, and it creates an entirely new framework of looking at information and personal information. So, going forward, all legislation now will have to have a view of that and finding the balance between access to information and. Um, you know, protecting personal information is something that we have to struggle with. But here, previously, there was a complete reduction of all the identity details. And here, we're trying to find that balance. Thank you, sir. OK, thank you, uh, uh, Ms. Isaac. OK, our members, I think uh, we've received uh, clarity on, on the matters uh, that you've raised. Um, and I think even on the issue that Honorable Mikulakis raised as well. Uh, we, we've discussed it in the previous meeting and in fact, the information that came through again was also said in that meeting. Uh, but, but clearly in terms of the constitutional uh, qualifications around eligibility to vote, we are addressing it in, in the amendments to this piece of legislation. And, and, I'm, and I think we can't but agree that we have the, the popular legislation, which we cannot just ignore. And there is a need to align uh, this piece of legislation to that. Um, and, um, and obviously, as, as we've been discussing in, in the entire meeting last week as well, we had to deal with balance, the balancing act uh, between protection of personal information and access to information. Okay, uh, on one way, I see your hand is still up. Uh, did you still have, you have a follow up or are you okay? 
because I don't think you put your hand down. Oh, I'm sorry, Chair. Uh, I'll lower it. Thank you. And with the double, your hand was up. Are you still with us? Honorable Dodo? Okay. Okay, I see Honorable Yes, I can hear you. Yes, yes. yes, I'm staying with the presentation made today in respect of the amendments, the explanation given by Mr. Mama Bolo in respect of all the matters which were raised, especially with regard to the issue of the IT, where I see it, I'm quite satisfied that these amendments are watertight, are put, are okay, and they give us a, a point or a direction where we can then, because there is clear alignment with all other legislation as well. Uh, we are at a point where I'm satisfied that we can then uh, adopt it. Uh, accept, adopt, and and forward. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Honorable Dodo. Honorable Mkosi. Um, thank you very much, uh, Chair. Greetings to your good self and the uh, members present in the meeting, Chair. Um, I think what I wanted to raise, Honorable Dodo, has already. Uh, 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 raised. Uh, I wish to second Honorable Totovu that uh, we adopted this um, after the presentation made by uh, the officials and the explanation. We are quite happy and we are sure that every matter that has been raised are, 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 are covered and are, are well explained. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, thank you, uh, Anwong Kosi. Uh, Honorable Seleku. I see your hand is up. Uh, oh, Chair, thank you very much. Chair, uh, Chair, I think there is the issue of time that, you know, we are pushed for time, you know, and listening to the other members of the committee saying that, you know, we adopt and everything, you know, and it, it's worrisome because now it seems like we are, we, you know, we have to do things today. You know, as much as some of the issues have been dealt with last week, but this morning before our meeting, there was some amendments done in terms of the propose, uh, proposals that we, know we were not given time to consider as a committee so that we can actually debate it, you know, Chair. Because what is important, Chair, is that as much as one would want to safeguard personal information, but also someone must not also, you know, try to give someone the right and take away another one's right. So for, for, for political parties to make sure that the voters' roles that are going to be used on election day, how are we going to make sure that there is no manipulation of information, that there is no dupl duplication of ID numbers if political parties are not given the voters' role that consists of all the, uh, of all the digits of ID numbers? And Chair, I, I don't want us to rush and rush on this particular bill. You know, because this is a very important bill because this bill can actually affect our, the credibility of our elections. And a lot of people has interest in how we run our election. We are a young democracy and we must make sure that we safeguard our election. Hence, I'm asking that let us not rush things. You know, let us apply our mind. Let us be given time to look, you know, uh, so that we can, you know, make informed decision before we can actually say, and, and, and reach common ground, just so that make sure that we move together as a committee, not for, for member to say, you know, you know, it was like someone has been given a directive, you just go and you just vote, you know, and Chair, uh, that's, that's my plea. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Honorable Salehu, uh, but I think, I think you should not talk on behalf of members. If you have a view, please put your view forward. Uh, but don't assume you know what we think, or honorable members on this platform know what we think. Um, anyway, let me, honorable Mutekwa. Yes, Chair. Uh, I'm sorry, I won't show my video, but um, I think we must not mix issues. The only addition that have been done today, um, it's also uh, issues that we raised last time. It's just that it had to concrete the bill. 
I therefore chair also in line that there's nothing fundamentally really that has been brought in as a new issue today. It's just the issue of the accuracy that is it, it has been explained and the issue of the voters' role distribution. That's all, Chair. I don't think there are fundamental matters. Therefore, Chair, I'm one of, I, I also fall in line to those that want to move and support the bill. Yeah. Is it me or? I'm on Are you talking to, are you addressing us? Yeah, yes, Honorable Chair. Uh, Chair, I, I, I don't know uh, <clears throat> because if, they, if, if there is no pressure, you know, in terms of time, I would I would want to propose something different, and I know how it works because there's already a proposal that has been seconded. But you know, at, at times um, where we want to go now, um, uh, sometimes disadvantages other other members, and then it's like maybe we, we're having battles in actually supporting or not because. Um, I myself would want to, to, to actually support the, 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 the bill. But, you know, I have a problem also when I only saw this thing now in the morning, you know, uh, because the, the views put forward here or my views that I'm putting here um, uh, have got no party mandate except for what I only had now. And because I understand the policy of the party issues of my constituents and so on, you know. So I, I, I would also wanted to propose that if there is no pressure behind us and without, you know, uh, 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 going to where we might go now, we actually maybe give it a day or two. We can even meet on Friday because at least now we know to specifically deal with the matter that has already been supported now. So that if we have other issues, then we have a platform to raise them. Those issues are then clarified. And then we go to where we are actually supposed to go now. That, that, that meeting, I think, can take about less than 10 minutes. And then we, we adopt the bill. There is no reason why we shouldn't adopt the bill. But I think uh, it's, it's very important also to be afforded time. Because to me, it would appear that maybe other members got this information maybe yesterday as little as it may be, but it, it is possible that if members say, no, there's only one issue that has been clarified now, even that one issue, is it procedural that we get that one issue, uh, 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 you know, 30 minutes before the meeting? I don't think that is uh, actually procedural. Uh, thank you, thank you, Chair. Ramon that's why it was presented in the meeting, uh, but Peter, does it may or wrong process? Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, Chair, I think the, 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 the concern that is raised by Honorable Mbezi, it's, it's, it's understandable, but it's unfortunate, Chair, because this um, bill was presented in our last uh, 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 select committee meeting where he was not in the meeting. Therefore, I don't think that it will be proper that we say we, 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 we take this matter back because he was not in the meeting at that time. We have del deliberated in the in the bill last week, or I'm, I'm not sure when was it, but it was it was in our last meeting. So secondly, Chair, I think what is said by Honorable um, Seleko is uncalled for. He can't say we are here in the meeting. Uh, maybe we, we, we were given a directive that says we must go and vote, therefore we are voting. It's not like that. I think that one is uncalled for. All of us we were here and the matters that were raised, that were concerned to the members, all of them are addressed now and are well explained. Therefore, we are still maintaining that. Let us adopt the bill. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Mikalakis. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. Chairperson, I am very sincerely frustrated with the manner in which we process bills. 
Um, we are, in essence, lawmakers. We have a constitutional duty to ensure that legislation that passes through our committee and through our house are sincerely believed to be the best possible version of a bill to achieve the, the objectives that we set out to achieve with it. Um, I'm not personally convinced that this is the best version of the bill, but I haven't had a chance to properly uh, debate it with fellow members of the committee, except by posing questions to the IEC and the state <clears throat> law advisor. Um, and my frustration stems from this, that it sometimes feels like we're all too happy to accept the recommendations that the state law advisor or the IEC or the departments put on the table. But we as a committee don't explore actually debating amongst ourselves whether what we are passing is actually the best possible version of a bill. So Chairperson, I would still recommend, as I did earlier, that we set aside time, we have time, set aside time as the committee to discuss this. But if the committee feels that it does not want to um, consider and apply their minds to this bill, I would then just like to propose that we insert in the, um, in the report, um, in terms of rule 2112F, of the NCOP rules that uh, we set aside time when we consider in the House the bill, that we set aside time for a debate on the bill, a short debate, um, so that this discussion can happen in terms of um, that rule that I referred you to um, in, in, a, in a manner that is actually properly considered. That would be my first request, that we, um, that we include that in the report. And my second point, because I don't know whether I'm going to be afforded an opportunity to, to indicate this, but as the bill currently stands, um, I myself um, cannot vote for it. And I would like when the time comes for my objection to it to also be noted in the, um, in, in the report. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Mikalakis. Honorable Bartlett? Yes, Honorable Chair, I will also be in full support of Honorable Nkosi to adopt this bill and support it because really we had a lot of time to discuss these issues. And for the mere fact that we still have a lot of work to do, uh, I don't think we'll have time to go to another meeting and discuss it. I don't have a problem with that, other member said. But I will not also repeat what Comrade, uh, sorry, Honorable Seleko said. But I think we must accept this bill. Thanks, Chair. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I herewith also want to say it's not of, of the fact that what people said or, or, or at this committee, but about the reality that we face outside and maybe court cases and constitutional court cases that will appear from this. We have a big responsibility to see that this, this um, legislation will comply within all the aspects um, that is needed. And therefore, I will also want to uh, support um, Honorable Michalakis, and I will also want to say that I will vote against this bill. Thank you. Um, Honorable Bezogo. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, once more, Honorable Chair. Honorable Chair, I think we need to be truthful to one another. This engagement about the bill and the amendments thereof are not coming here for the first time today. This is a, the third session with both the IEC, the department and parliament in respect of this. The first meeting when we discussed this, we even had to postpone the meeting because we were not satisfied about the alignment between the process of the IEC and the process of parliament, even in respect of the question, the comment that we receive from the, from the members of public. That in itself demonstrated our unflinching commitment to ensure that we are thorough in what we are doing. Now, I don't understand this. I don't understand that we are now suddenly bringing our own party political interests to an extent that we undermine how other people think 
undermine our intelligence as, as to how we engage on these particular issues. I think this is unacceptable because clearly I will also say the same thing about other political parties, that they are also carrying their own mandate of rejecting this process, of frustrating it. We, we, we are pressured by time. As, as legislators, we've got a responsibility to help the IEC, to help all other agencies that are going to be responsible for the elections, to complete their work, to ensure that we are ready in terms of the local government elections if they are going to be held this year. It cannot be us, and we must not use some, some tactics that are not understandable to frustrate these processes. I think we have made a proposal. This is a firm proposal because we have interrogated all the issues in a very, very substantive way. And, and, and we think that we, we need to de decide on this. We need to resolve this. We, have, we know what we're doing. We know what we're saying. We have, we have asked pertinent questions about this particular being. And therefore, and therefore our intelligence must not be undermined as if, as if we are thinking for other people or we are subcontracting our, our thinking or we are outsourcing it. We are not doing that. We know what we are doing. And in that sense, Chair, I move and second and support all the people, uh, all members of parliament who say we must adopt it and follow the normal processes. This is not the first bill that we are engaging as this committee. We have, throughout since 2019, we have undertaken a series of bills. And my view is that we must follow the same process that we followed with regard in respect of all other bills in terms of taking them to parliament. And I'm going to sincerely implore on you, Chair, to fast track this particular process. It must go to parliament, so that parliament must decide on it, uh, because we believe that all the processes that, 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 that impinge on legality, on constitutionality, on lawfulness, have been taken care of in terms of our deliberations and in terms of considering the amendments which were presented to us today. And therefore, I support that we must finalize this particular process now, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Honorable Dodo. Uh, Honorable Zandamala, your hand is up. Honorable Zandamala? No, thanks, uh, Chair. Uh, it was just a concern on my side that uh, if uh, as a committee there are things that we raise in the committee or maybe members that uh, they they didn't get clarity or it's not clear, explanations were not clear to them we should every time subject ourselves that things must go to parliament and then as if we we, we, we are now taking the route of we have to vote against uh, with regard to any other bill that comes to the committee. We, we are in a committee, in this committee, so that we, we have to get clarity and, uh, and uh, we are all satisfied about everything that uh, is presented to us. It's just a concern. I think I support, I don't know who's, uh, who was raising the issue of maybe we should get time as a committee and deliberate on this. I think it's one of the things that we, we should also consider. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Honorable Honorable Thanks, Chair. I, 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 I'm getting confused now. What is this thing called time? Because we were given the document, we even postponed our meeting just to start this. Is it because of the three issues that have been added up today or is your members wants to us to start afresh the whole thing i don't understand chair today we need to uh, to, to to approve the bill and go forward chair i don't understand this issue of time what time do we have because we don't have time this matter has been presented to us more than three times. What is it that members, the other members are looking for? And anyway, Chair, when, can you tell me when these members as well have agreed, these committees agreed in every, every prayer that has presented? 
We have always have some differences, but we move forward, Chair. I think I suggest that let's move forward, Chair, and do the process and vote if we need to vote. Thank you, Honorable Chair. For Honorable Seleko, you'll be the last. Chair, thank you very much. I'm not going to dwell or, or and deal with uh, what members have said in terms of my utterances or my, my views in terms of this. Uh, I, I, as Mulelo Silego, I really view this bill as very important. And when we are dealing with issues that is very important, you, you, you cannot come to a platform of a committee that say, we are pressed for time. So you are actually saying indirectly to us as members of the committee that because of time, we have to do things. So we don't apply our mind because we are pressed for time. And Chair, we have dealt with very, very you know, difficult and technical bills, and we even took longer because the only interest that we had as a committee was to make sure that we bring a bill that is going to, that is going to assist the country. And if there are members that have some few, few concerns you know, about a particular bill, those members should not be suppressed. They should not be suppressed because there is no directive that says you must have so many meetings and then you can deal on the bill because it's a very important bill and we cannot allow time. So because there's going to be local government elections. Now we need to do this thing and you know, Chair. No, Chair, I totally disagree with those sentiments. Thank you very much. And if it comes to push that we have to agree on this particular bill today, then I would have to write to, to raise and, and record my objection to this particular bill. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Seleku. Yeah, thank you, Honorable Members. I think um, I've noted all the views, uh, but just to put on, just to put certain facts on, on, on the matter, because Honorable Members, um, we've dealt with urgent goals in the past as well. And, and this is also an urgent goal. And, it's also a very important goal, Honorable Seleku, to all of us as members of this committee. But I think in terms of the discussions that have been taking place over the past few engagements on this call, there have been consistent uh, positions by certain members, but I don't think we should belabor the point, Honorable Members. Um, these issues have been raised. They've been part of our discussions. Today we've allowed further engagement and discussion and ordinarily we don't normally do that, but we did that in the interest of also ensuring that members uh, understand you know, the issues at hand. And uh, interesting enough, the, the discussion that is coming forth, it's, it's sort of repetitive of what has also been coming up in the previous meeting. Um, but, as, as, as I was saying, you know, honorable members, you and honorable selector, you can't assume members are not applying their minds. We've been applying our minds on each and every poll that has come to this committee. And, um, and we, we're considering matters like constitutional provisions. We're looking at com competing rights. Uh, we, we're also looking at um, alignment of legislation. And, and we've been considering these things, and, and it's not fair to say that we actually don't know what we are doing, because we, we do know what we are doing, and we have processed quite a few goals in this committee, and true enough what Honorable Mujeto has said, it's not always that we have agreed uh, on, on certain legislation, but, but given the deliberations of members, uh, it is clear that uh, majority of members of the view that we should move forward uh, in terms of this process. Uh, Honorable members, there are two amendments uh, to this goal. It is in terms of clause eight and uh, clause clause twenty. So I'm going to go clause by clause, on members, uh, for, for the adoption of the clauses. Um, we'll, we'll start with clause eight. Uh, if, if I can get a mover for the adoption, Honorable Tepa. I move. Honorable Barton. I move, Chair. Okay. Honorable Barton moves for the adoption. A second there. I support, Chair. Honorable Nkosi. Nkosi. Okay. Are there any uh, objections? Chairperson, I object. I object, Chair. 
Okay, so the DA objects. Um, any other objection? Uh, Chair. I'm not objecting. I'm rather abstaining in this process. Okay, no, I'm still getting to abstentions, but it's fine. I'll, I'll just note your abstention. But... Uh, okay, any uh, any abstentions in addition to Anvon Gwebi? Okay, there are none. Uh, I think I remember the, the clause is duly, duly adopted. If we can then move on to the uh, clause, 20. If I can get a mover for the adoption of the clause. So do we have honorable chair? I move that we adopt uh, the clause. Thank you. Thank you, honorable chair. Second, chair. Uh, second, honorable Tetra. Any objections? The DA objects, chair. Okay. Uh, any abstentions? Uh, Inka uh, abstains. Okay. Uh, thank you, honorable members. I think the the uh, clauses are, are duly adopted. Okay, I can hear. Is that Zanamela? Honorable Zanamela? I don't know if it's just me, but can members hear him? No, we can't hear the dove. Honorable the dove. Is it the dove or the Namela? It's honorable the dove. Okay, honorable the dove, can you mute, please? Unless you had something to say. And honorable the as well. Okay, thank you, honorable members. Um, honorable members, but given that this is also quite quite an urgent goal, um, I think we'll then deal with the, the committee report. Um, I'm going to ask Gershwin to to write it for us. Gershwin. Sorry, sorry, Chair. Uh, I honorable have... Chair. Chairperson. Honorable Gwezi. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry to delay you to get to this point, uh, but I wanted to request that you, I mean, your office emails me the complete bill. That's what was presented because I don't have that. Uh, uh, not so if that can be emailed to me uh, as soon as possible or even today with these amendments. Okay, without amendments first and with these amendments. Uh, that that have been done today. Thank you. No, sure, Honorable Gwezi. I think we'll send you the entire package, uh, okay. given that this is your first meeting with the with the committee. Uh, we'll ensure yes. that you get the package. Okay. Um, okay, Gershon, thanks. Uh, our members, in terms of the, the draft report, um, can you go down, please, Gershon? Uh, in terms of the background, just gives the background in terms of what the bill uh, aims to amend. Uh, the one being the Electoral Commission Act 1996, the other the Electoral Act 1998. Uh, can you go down to the question? Um, the Local Government Municipal Electoral Act 2000 as well. Those are the three pieces of legislation. Uh, the second point goes into the objects of the bill which is to enhance existing legislative mechanisms that ensure free and fair elections in accordance with the constitution of the Republic of South Africa, uh, to provide legislative authorization for innovations in elective practice in keeping with best practice to improve the commission's efficiency in managing elections, and thirdly, to align the electoral act with the provisions of the Protection of Personal Information Act regarding the protection of the personal information of voters. Uh, can you go down, please? Uh, in terms of our public participation process and committee deliberations, uh, the bill was referred to the committee on the 3rd of December, 2020, um, and we were briefed by the IEC on the 8th of December on the bill. Uh, please go down. The bill was advertised in all 11 official languages in both national and regional newspapers from the 14th 
uh, of January to the 29th, um, we received 1,550 individual submissions uh, from the Geo South Africa website, as well as uh, five submissions from other stakeholders. And uh, the main issues that were raised by the stakeholders uh, were in relation to clauses 8, 9, 13, 14, and 20 of the book. And the list of stakeholders that made the submissions uh, were the following organizations, uh, the Geo South Africa, uh, Patriotic Movement, SA, the City of Cape Town Metropolitan Municipality, and Mabungani Center for Investigative Journalism, 70, um, 70s group, and Mr. Volhan, Paul Gutter. Okay. And we also received submissions from, from individuals, about 1,550 submissions to the Geo South Africa website, of which 1,300 were against the bill, 26 were in favor, and 200 were not fully in favor. Uh, although they could not provide reasons. Uh, on the 17th of February, the IEC responded to the summary of submissions, um, having received advice from the information regulator and to ensure that the goal was in line with the provisions of the Protection of Personal Information Act. Um, the table proposed amendments on the bill and the, the committee agreed to the proposed amendments emanating from the written submissions and that was in our previous meeting. However, in terms of today's meeting, the, the report will reflect that we further deliberated and considered the amendments on the bill. Uh, and a close by close deliberations were conducted and the bill was finalized. Um, however, Gershwin, you need to also add that, that uh, clause, um, the, the support, the objections, and the extensions in terms of clause eight and clause 20. Uh, then in terms of the recommendation, we're saying that having considered the electoral laws amendment bill referred to us and testified by the joint JTM of the section 75 bill, um, namely the electoral laws uh, amendment bill, uh, what we're making proposed amendments for the council's consideration to the section 75 bill. Uh, in essence, our recommendations will then go to the, to the National Assembly. But, but in terms of the report, I don't remember this, this would be our, our report that would go to the House and the proposed amendments will be attached uh, to, to the report. Um, are there any additions from honorable members? Yes, Chair. Honorable Nicolas. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, I would just like to ask that uh, the DA's dissenting view be recorded in the report as is the usual practice, please. Um, and then Chairperson, I at an earlier stage mentioned um, that um, I would like for us to include in the report um, that we request in terms of rule 2112 F um, a debate in the house. If we can include that in re the report, I would be willing to support. Thank you. To support the report, to be clear. Okay, I, I think in terms of your descending view, uh, that that is normal practice. I think in terms of whether we need a debate, uh, it's another matter. Uh, but essentially, um, we do statements in the house, and all parties have an opportunity to to also do those statements. Honourable uh, Nicolakis, honourable members, do you have any views on this matter? Professor? I'm struggling with connecting. I support Honorable Michelle Akisin. Other Honorable Members? Chairperson, can you hear me? Honorable Professor? I said I support Honorable Michelle Akisin. I respect the House. Can I get the views of other members, please? Honorable members, Honorable Dodovo. Honorable Chair, Honorable Silegu. Honorable Silegu, I don't see your hand. I'm not seeing anyone's hand. Yeah, no, no, Chair, and I, I don't, I don't think that the inclusion of of Rule uh, 211, uh, 2F, you know, would do any harm. That let us debate uh, this bill, you know, when it comes to the House. Thank you very much. Okay, Honorable Dodo. There is nothing honorable much I keep on cutting. I keep okay. on cutting on and apologize for that, Honorable Chair. All that I'm saying is that I support the report. Okay, we're dealing with a matter 
Honorable Dito, there's amendments that the, the, the DA has proposed that we debate uh, in terms of two, rule 211 to F. Uh, ordinarily, we, we, we do statements in the House and political parties do that as well. This is a section 75 call. Uh, Honorable Dido, we're not yet at the point of adopting the goal. Sir, can you hear me? No. Yes, we can hear you, Honorable Dido, but can you hear us? No, I was saying that uh, one of the many, many bills that we engaged in, that we processed as the committee, and, and, and a bill that we submitted to Parliament in a normal, proper procedure of Parliament. I don't understand this sudden brinkmanship of playing to the gallery of, of doing this and that. I think the TA, like all other parties, have got a right when this bill is presented to Parliament to can make a declaration and, 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 and express their, their view on the, on the debate. And normally, as we all are aware, they will be given some time to can present whatever views that they want to present on the field. My view is that let us follow the normal process that we call study uh, about this about this field. It's an important piece of legislation, but it's starting to break into the that forces us that suddenly we must have a, a, some debate on this chair. I suggest that we follow the normal process that we always follow in Parliament to process this bill. And any part of the Parliament will be afforded an opportunity to make the subject and declare it. Thank you, Honorable Dito. Honorable Mcheta. Honorable Mcheta, are you with me? Can you hear me? You can hear me, Chair. Okay, I'm not bad, let's... Yeah, we can hear you, Chair. Okay. I want to view the honorable members. Honorable Nkosi. Chairperson, thank you so much. Um, Chair, I, I, I would like to align myself with Honorable Toto for that. Let us follow the, the, the processes that we used to follow when we deal with this report. Thank you. Okay, I'm um, agree with that. No, no, I said we agree with that. I'm not sure what's wrong. Can you hear me clearly? Because I was yes, struggling, I but we agree with Honorable Yes, okay. Honorable Zander Yes, I agree with that. If I can get your view, please. Come again, Chair. Do you have a view on the matter, Honorable Zanamela? Do I have what, Chair? I can't hear you clearly. I said, in, in terms, the DA, uh, Honorable Mikalaki, is proposing that we have a debate on this call. Um, ordinarily, we, we, we take the ball to the House and we do statements and declarations in the NCOP. And various party political positions we come to in terms of the declaration. Uh, so there's a view on the one end that we must do a debate, there's a view on the other end that we should just not follow the normal procedures that we normally do. Yeah, look, uh, 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 we are raised our concern, Chair. And um, I think based on what I said earlier on, I think. Uh, we, we still maintain what we said with regard to the position, our position. Okay, so you'll right. give guidance. Yeah. All right. Um, Honorable Mugwezi. Okay. Okay, I remember that. Then I think in terms of the report, we will note the descending view of the DA. Um, however, the other recommendation about the debate, uh, we, we would rather go to the default position of being statements in the House 
And the DA, like any other political party, would also do their declaration on the matter. I think given that on members, can I get a mover for the adoption of the report? I move, sir. I move, Honorable, Honorable Chair. Yes. Honorable Mkosi? Honorable Mkosi, are you... Hello? Can you hear me? We can't hear Honorable Nkosi. Any other honorable Thank you very members? much, Chair. I want to, want to support Honorable Nkosi. Honorable Nkosi. Honorable Chair. Honorable Chair. I don't know who's Honorable Nkosi. Honorable Chair. I, we can hear you, ma'am. Yes, uh, I'm saying I wanted to move for the adoption. Now that Honorable Bartlett has moved, I support Honorable Bartlett. Thank you for the mover. You second oh, for the adoption of the report. Yes, I'm support. I'm seconding the the adoption of the report. Thank you. Okay. Are there any objections? Yes, uh, Chairperson. In light of the fact that the ANC members are scared of a debate, I cannot vote in favour of the report. Thank out you. of order. I'm so. Yeah. Like is nobody's afraid of anything. Nobody's Never. afraid, Chair. That's no. also debatable, Chair, but I'll leave it no, at that. No, no. You can't say that, Chair. Objections, Honorable Nikolakis. Uh, are there any abstentions on the report? The Chair, my hand, can I just? Can I say the DA objects? Yeah, yeah the DA objects and the ANC I doesn't want to. This is also up. But Sileko, I never see your hand up. I just hear you speaking. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't but, want a debate, Chair. It's okay, but we object. No, out of no one's afraid of a debate, uh, Honorable Select. Let's do uh, it then. You probably have your reasons why you want to debate, uh, but that's your, your view. There are other views that are being uh, put forward as well, and I think we need to respect that too. Um, Okay, uh, if there are no extensions, then I remember that I think the, the report is then duly adopted. Um, let me thank you, honorable members, for your time that you made for this meeting and for your participation in this meeting. Uh, I think uh, we will then take uh, processes forward uh, as a group uh, in terms of this meeting and, and move ahead with, with this call. Let me then take this opportunity to thank uh, the parliamentary legal advisor, the, the uh, Office of the State Law Advisor, um, honorable members and the IEC for their uh, contributions uh, to this process and to this goal. And uh, yeah, and let me then declare this meeting closed. Thank you very much. Thanks, Chair. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, 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 Chair. Thank you,